and Dr. Benjamin Damore, uh, may they please join me as we start their session. And the topic that we're going to be discussing is determina determinants of effective environmental education policy in South African students. Beef biography about Dr. Benjamin. Um, he's an environmental and research fellow at the Faculty of Education in Walter Sisulu University, Butterworth, in the Eastern Cape in South Africa. His area of expertise is environmental education, and he holds a teacher's professional certificate um, in advanced certificate in education, a bachelor of education with honors in environmental education, and he's also got a master's in environmental education and a doctor of philosophy in environmental education. Um, Dr. Benjamin Damo, we're looking forward to hearing your insights. Um, you can take it away. Okay, thank you. Um, I want to wish everyone a happy World Environmental Day. And I'm very happy to join this communication this afternoon. I won't waste much of your time. This evening we'll be talking about the determinants of effective environmental education policy in South African schools. So please, I'll be very glad if you could control the slides for me. Um, we all know that the world is being confronted with many environmental issues today. And we have seen that environmental issues have dominated global conversation. And this has made world leaders to look at alternative ways of incorporating environmental content into the school curricula. Now, on the global perspective, in response to the 1997 TBC declaration coupled with Agenda 21, which was a summit that was held in 1992, on EE, many countries around the globe now have enacted and adopted education policies aimed at integrating environmental content into the school curriculum. Notably among these countries are the New, uh, are New Zealand, Australia, United Kingdom, the USA, Brazil, China, Zimbabwe, Tanzania, and South Africa. They have all initiated policies to adapt EE as a component of the school curriculum. The next slide. The next slide. So when we talk about, since my study is situated in South African context, I will look at how South Africa has responded to the global call in, uh, towards integration of environmental content into the school curriculum. In 1990, a white paper was issued, and this uh, white paper gave a clear and firm direction on how environmental content should be incorporated into the school curriculum. From there, we had what you call Environmental Education Policy Initiative, which we call it e EEPI. It was established in 1992 to facilitate the collection and development of EE policy in schools. And then in 1996, we all know when there was a transition from the apartheid government to the new government. We had a national education policy formulation to develop a new curriculum whereby EE content would be integrated into the school curriculum. So right through, we don't want to waste much of the time since time is already spent, from curriculum 2005 to curriculum, what we call the CAPS curriculum now, we have seen that environmental contents are being incorporated into all disciplines. So our study here, what, what do we see, uh, seek to achieve? The objective of the people is to analyze or to ascertain the, the very ingredients that support the implementation of effective environmental education policy. Other things, we'll leave it behind. This is a pure empirical study. We're dealing with mixed method, pragmatic paradigm, triangulation. The sample size total is about 185. Let's go to the next slide so that we won't waste much of our time. Now, these are the results and the discussion of the study. The investigation found that EE objectives stated in the CAPS document, for the sake of those who are not in South Africa, when you talk about CAPS, is a curriculum assessment policy statement. That is the current curriculum document the South African basic education system is using now. We call it the CAPS document. 
There's one thing that we need to establish here, that the CAPS document, the, the main objectives that is incorporating EE into the curriculum is too broad and lack clarity. It was discovered that the EE objective, which drives the policy design, was simply listed as part of the curriculum's general objectives. There were no explicit objectives connected with the implementation of the EE policy. Schools with a strong interest in EE have their local policy statement that directs their environmental efforts. Individual schools, including, including recycles, garden, were transformational programs to help implement EE policy. It was discovered that aside from the primary aims and objectives of the curriculum, the CAPS document was very silent when it comes to the policy EE policy implementation. What are we saying here? The, 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 the current curriculum that the South African government is using is encouraging every teacher to incorporate environmental content into their disciplines. But what we discovered is that there's nothing that is said in the, the policy document that directs what teachers must do, what, that directs how teachers should incorporate environmental content into their study. So these are, these are some of the findings that we discovered. The next slide. The next slide. There's one thing that we also saw about institutional and societal context. The study discovered that the institutional structure of some schools encouraged the adoption of EE policy. It was observed that some schools have a code of conduct that guides EE policy implementation. It was noticed that a lot of schools in the townships we're not establishing a favorable environment to accommodate EE policies. This is what we are saying. In South Africa, we have what you call modesty schools. We have those schools in the township. We have the quintile one to the quintile five schools. What we notice is that most of the schools in the townships, they do not have initiatives that support the implementation of environmental education policy. And that is not the case when you go to, sorry to say the white school, the established schools, they have firm policies they have well-tested policies that drives environmental education policies in their various schools. Then the next one is the implementation strategy. As per the survey, the findings, what we saw is that most of the teachers do not even understand the objectives of EE policy as outlined in the curriculum. This has impacted how the policy is applied in various schools. According to the study's findings, the CAPS document does not provide implementation strategy that includes the mandate of policy practitioners in the curriculum. This directly influenced how EE was adapted in classrooms. The study found that characteristics that assist the implementation of educational policies were scarcely present in the school system. This has harmed how EE policy is implemented in schools. And most teachers and principals were unfamiliar with policy design, objectives, and implementation strategy of environmental education. The next slide, please. That we need to know when it comes to implementation of policies. We have what you call the policy design, stakeholder engagement, the institutional and social context, and the implementation strategy established in this study. The curriculum's aims and objectives for EE are too broad and unclear. I believe that you are from South Africa here, so you'll be familiar with some of the things that I am saying. The research found that the elements that facilitate that facilitate the implementation of educational policies were barely existent in the school system. And this has affected how EE policy is implemented in most schools. Most teachers and principals were dispassionately unfamiliar with the policy design, objectives, and strategies to support EE implementation. The determinants above collaborated to make policy implementation possible at the school level. Although, the concept of EE as integrated component is a novel and excellent, excellent curriculum developers should realign the curriculum aims and objectives. The curriculum developers are obliged to re-examine the general aim of the national curriculum on, this is what is written in the CAPS document. And I want us to look at it. It's quoted there. It said, human rights, inclusivity, environmental and social justice infusing the principles and practices of social and environmental justice 
human rights as defined in, in the constitution of the Republic of South Africa. This is what is said about environmental education in the school curriculum. This is the only thing and nothing more. Okay. So now Can the president. Hello? May we please wrap up, May we please wrap up Dr. Mandel, so okay. that I can bring it and then we have a discussion, a short discussion. Okay. Instead of the main rhetoric, the broad goal associated with environmental education should be narrowed to specifics and clarity. Environmental, environmental concerns are global and national pandemics and should be treated with the utmost curriculum attention with emphatic principles. Political will should be embedded in the curriculum, not just a drive-through, a knee-jerk approach that we have witnessed for the past years through the CAFS document. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Dr. Benjamin Damo. And let's welcome our other speakers, and then we can have a short discussion. I've got a few questions. 